the Bill Barr stuff is kind of... Oh, yes, yes. Let's do that. First of all, I don't know why we're still talking to Bill Barr. I guess they're, you know, like we, we hear from Eric Holder every now and then. It would be uh, nice to hear why we, we didn't arrest people during the financial crisis. Uh, here's Bill Barr. Like, it, it's sort of hard to figure out what his game is. Maybe he just likes being on television. Here he is with uh, uh, Caitlin, what is her name? Caitlin Collins. Collins on CNN. As he responded in response to you saying you'd vote for the Republican ticket. Wow, former AG Bill Barr, who let a lot of great people down by not investigating voter fraud in our country, has just endorsed me for president despite the fact that I call him, called him weak, slow-moving, lethargic, gutless, and lazy. Based on the fact that I greatly appreciate his wholehearted endorsement, I am removing the word lethargic from my statement. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's classic Trump. What's the question? What's your response? My response? Well, I mean, obviously, what I said was that I'm very disappointed that this country is stuck with this choice between two people. I don't think either of them uh, should be president of the United States. But given that binary choice, uh, I feel I have to choose Trump. But he's mocking you. So it's not about me. I, I think that. Uh, that I've said this all along, if faced with a choice between two people, neither of which I think should be president, I feel it's my duty to pick the person who I think would do the least damage to the country. And I think Trump would do less damage than Biden. And I think all this stuff about a threat to democracy, I think the real threat to democracy is the progressive movement and the, and the Biden administration. The Biden administration or President B Biden himself? Biden's, uh, Biden's support for the progressive agenda. I think a lot of people hear that and the case that we just talked about that went before the Supreme Court, essentially, and say, how can you see that and say that Biden is a greater threat to democracy? Because, well, who's, where, where are we losing our freedoms? How are our freedoms being constrained? They're being constrained by uh, the press, progressive government. And, uh, you know, democracy, especially you know, from the Anglosphere democracies, the five eyes and so forth. The threat's never been for autocratic government on the right. But how specifically right is Biden man. threatening democracy? The, the threat to, to freedom and democracy has always been on the left. It's the collectivist, socialist uh, agenda. And that is where we're losing our freedom. Parents are losing the freedom to control uh, their children's education. Uh, and, uh, you know, People can't speak their mind without losing their jobs and things like that. This is worse than the McCarthy era. Where is that coming from? It's not coming from the right. Pause Those for one two second. Things that you just just also there, be you clear. Hold on. Pause it. Pause it. Pause it for one second. Uh, just to be clear, the federal government does not get involved with what's going on with these school boards. Um. He can't even be specific about the way the yeah. progressive agenda the, the, is doing it. He's just the like, idea that, like, um, <laughs> uh, because your employer fires you because they don't, they're not too happy about you going on being racist or, or homophobic or transphobic or whatever it is. He's not complaining, incidentally, about the doxing that's happening to protesters uh, who are protesting uh, on college cam campuses. Google's fired forty-eight people. <laughs> He, For Israel stuff. like, this is, his complaint is with the private uh, market. And he's pissed because he thinks the government is interfering with the private market. None of this, understand, all of these Republicans are right-wing reactionaries. That's it. There is no logic to any of this. There is no scenario. There is no candidate who can be running against Donald Trump where Bill Barr wouldn't uh, vote for him. And then the only, the only thing that's even remotely interesting about this is why does Bill Barr feel compelled to go out and signify his fealty to this right-wing movement that is otherwise known as the Republican Party? There is some job he's looking for. Oh, yeah. And it's unclear who the job is with. But that's what's that's the only interesting part about this. The rest of it, this is what Republican politics have been and they will continue to be distinct from Donald 
Trump. Well, uh, he, he, this, he's also not promoting a book anymore. He, in, in, in 2022, he was promoting his book, One Damn Thing After Another, which was all about how bad Trump was. And so he could get on the liberal media circuit to sell it. And now, well, he needs a new job coming from it's not coming from the right those two things that you just noted there you believe are worse than a president of the united states trying to subvert the will of the people by overturning the results no, of the I, election I, no i think a, i think a country all the things together like we're not enforcing our, our borders so we have open borders we have lawlessness uh in in our cities uh we have regulations coming fast and furious so telling people what kind of stoves they can use pause what it, kind pause of cars it. they now all of this is fictionalized we don't have open borders we don't have anything remotely close to that we don't think the idea that our cities have become like these like uh, you know these uh, uh uh centers of anarchy is absurd there is no restriction you can still light gas on fire and burn it inside your apartment but how do you say that our cities are lawless, but regulations, which are laws intended to protect people are bad? This is all bullshit. Go ahead. Regulations coming fast and furious. So telling people what kind of stoves they can use and what kinds of cars they have to drive and they can have you know, oh, cafe standards cars and, 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 and so forth. Uh, yeah, those are the, those are the threats to democracy. But, but President Biden is not in control of what some school boards across the country are He's doing. Using you can, the you can make that argument, but, what, what but are these how major, is that the same well, thing? Major changes are being made in our country without without the democratic process, and they're being made by bureaucrats in these agencies. You, okay, pause. You, you cannot argue that Republicans across the country are not doing that as well. In my own hometown, there's a huge fight at the library over which books kids can read. This is not something that is a there's single party been, fight. It, 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 do you think there are, there should, don't you think there should be some limits on, on what people are able to read at very young people, ages? I just think people look at what you're saying and they don't. Yeah, my brain's and, and, and maybe, maybe even Republicans who have concerns about what's happening with school boards or, you know, the culture and don't, uh, maybe abortion even, don't equate that with, with January 6th and Trump's efforts. When you told him he, the, the election was not stolen, there we go. and he still went out there and said it was stolen and led a lot of people to believe that. They don't, those things aren't equal. It feels like a false equivalency. Well, I, I disagree. I think, in, in, I think uh, the country is much more susceptible to losing freedoms by the excesses of the left than they have been steadily, and that, that's clear. People lose their jobs. Kids can't speak out in the classroom. They have to go along with what the professor says in order to get good grades and so forth. It's, well, it's become like a Stepford nation being directed by uh, the Who progressive is this, elite. this is OK. This is this is I mean, this is this is sort of amazing, too. Right. Because um, this is like, incidentally, the Stepford wives was basically an allegory for the patriarchy and, uh, and fundamentalism, yeah. just so you know. And um, these, you could take Bill Barr and you could put him on television anytime over the past 60 years and he would seem maybe, no, maybe, maybe even less anomalous than he is now. The idea that like you, the college students are being indoctrinated and they can't speak out and blah, blah, blah. I mean, this is all this, this is the and, and what is it that they can't speak out about? Like, what is it that they can't speak out about? Um, this is such garbage from this guy. And um, but it is I think it, it's helpful in understanding where the Republican Party is, because this is like, you know, this is the anti-Trump wing of the Republican Party. Is there any more that we we don't need any more yeah. of this, do we? I mean, this is just to understand. This is the idea that somehow, like this is he he doesn't he doesn't believe in this choice between the two. They want a Republican in office, period, and they'll make it like, ugh, I'm going to hold my nose and vote for Donald Trump. Uh, that guy. Oh, I hate that guy. <laughs> yeah. I really do. Um, he, uh, hired, his dad hired Jeffrey Epstein to work at the Dalton School also, so.
What yeah, yeah, ask him about that. Everybody gets a mulligan. Everybody gets the a mulligan. The one thing you don't want to happen when you're hiring for a school. <laughs>